When you ask somebody what makes a really good hybrid mirrorless camera, I think most people are gonna say, well, Armando, it's gotta take really good photos, but also take really good video. But I find that's not always true. Cameras tend to lean towards one side over the other, meaning they can take really good photos, but they're lacking in the video features or vice versa. They can take really good video, but then they lack in the photo department. Is there a camera out there that can take incredible photos, performance-wise is just outstanding, but also also have cinema quality video. Well, I think I might have found that camera. This is the Nikon Z8. Now for full transparency, I reached out to Nikon and asked them if I can borrow a Z8 and a bunch of lenses. Now, they're not letting me keep the camera or any of the lenses. Also, they don't have any input in this video. So with that out of the way, let's go ahead and talk about the very first thing. When you pull this camera out of the box, and that's the feel and design. So the first thing I noticed when picking up this camera is its size. This thing reminds me of like the older DSLR bodies, but I don't mean that in a bad way. I love this big grip. I mean, I feel confident holding this camera, especially taking photos or even video. It just makes it so much easier to hold. Not to mention when you have a larger camera like this, you would expect that you would get a larger display, which you actually do. This display is fantastic, which even if I didn't have an external monitor, I would not be disappointed. Let's talk about the design, layout, and ports on this camera, which I feel have been simplified quite a bit. So you've got your on and off switch, dedicated record button on top, ISO control, pretty standard that you would see on most hybrid mirrorless camera. I do like this little display here, which you don't see or you don't get on many cameras, and it's the fact that you can, at a glance, see all of your settings really quickly, and it works both for photos and videos. Now, this is cool. You have a dedicated photo and video mode, which if you look at it, it happens instantly. The moment I hit photo, it just switches, and then if I go to video, I mean, it's instant. Unlike other cameras that could take like 20 seconds and can be very annoying. Again, very simplified menu that you can customize. And over here on this side, you have a dedicated full-size HDMI, microphone input, and also headphone jack. You also have two USB-C ports, one for data transfer and the other one for PD power. So if you're doing a live stream, you can have one directly connected to your computer, but also one directly connected so that you can power the camera. So you don't have to worry about either of those. Now on this side, you have all your media. This does take CF Express Type B cards, which personally are my favorite. Fastest data transfers, I'm using a two terabyte card because this does record in 8K. We'll talk about that in a second. But yeah, I feel like overall, like you have all the ports that you would need, not only for the photo side, but also for video. This is my favorite part of the review where I get to talk about the internals, the sensor and the software. This has a 45.7 megapixel sensor that can record in 8K RAW internally. And this is where the magic happens because this uses NRAW, which NRAW is incredible. It grades beautifully. It's really easy to manipulate in post-production. But if RAW is not your flavor, you can actually record also internally ProRes 422HQ. Now, do me a favor, name another hybrid mirrorless camera that can shoot photos in 45.7 megapixels or higher that can also record internal RAW and internal ProRes 422HQ. Okay, I'll wait. All right, so we switched over to the Nikon Z8 and we're also using the 85 millimeter F1.2 at 2.0. By the way, did I tell you guys that this can also record in ProRes RAW internally? Okay, you're probably thinking like, these are crazy video specs. There's gotta be a catch, right? Maybe if you're recording in AK60, there's like a crop? Nope. Maybe if you do 4K 120, there's gotta be a crop? Nope. Okay, for sure, for sure, if you're doing slow motion, there's gotta be a crop, Armando. No. In fact, right now we are recording in 4K, but in the menu system, if I turn on extended over sampling, what that does is that it takes the 8K image and it down samples it to 4K, giving me a much higher quality 4K video recording, which nobody's gonna be upset about that, right? Anyway, I think I'm kind of done with the city. Let's go to the mountains. Ah, I love the mountains. 
So check this out, we're still filming with the Nikon Z8 and we're using an Atomos Ninja recorder so that you guys can see what's happening behind the scenes. The autofocus on this camera is amazing. Now I'm gonna go ahead and turn around and you'll notice that there's a box around my head because it's intelligent and it knows where the subject is still at. And even if I try to hide behind this tree, it'll still track me. Now, we are filming with the 50 millimeter F1.2. Now at F1.2, to try to grab focus, even if I try to run like this, boom, it's just tack sharp, very smooth, very organic, amongst the best that I've ever seen on any mirrorless camera. So the Nikon Z8 has five axes image stabilization. Now I think the best way for me to demonstrate this is these next couple of shots, this little sequence that I made was all done handheld, no warp stabilizer, just to give you a demo of what the IBIS looks like. So as you guys can see, the in-body image stabilization on the video side works extremely well in the Z8. And that's also gonna translate over to the photo side. If you've ever taken a picture at night, you lower your shutter speed. If you use a camera that does not have in-body image stabilization, you'll notice that the image is gonna look very blurry, especially if you're hand holding the camera. That's not the case with the Z8. No matter if you have like little micro jitters, it's gonna be tack sharp. Now remember, you have a 45.7 megapixel sensor, so when you downsample and you're throwing stuff on social media, it's even gonna look sharper, which is impressive. Now, I've done stuff with Cam, who does a lot of fast paced stuff when I've taken photos. So when I have subject recognition, animal eye autofocus, all this stuff works really great, not only on the video, but also on the photo side. I've been able to take some incredible photos with this camera using Nikon lenses. I'm just so impressed with the clarity and resolution of this camera. And just like the optics, like it's one of those cameras that I literally just wanna pick up and use all the time. Again, the grip, the ergonomics, it's just a camera that's such a pleasure to use. I think it's time to address the elephant in the room and that's the lens selection on these Nikon cameras. I often hear people say, gosh, Armando, these Nikon cameras are great and there's a lot of features on the video side, but third party lenses are just not really there. Something that really nobody's talking about is the fact that the Nikon Z mount is the largest mount of any mirrorless camera available today. What does that mean? This is very important, is the fact that you can actually adapt to other hybrid mirrorless camera options. Like for example, I'm a Sony shooter. I shoot a lot of Sony cameras and I have a lot of Sony lenses. There's a mount that I can buy and I can adapt those lenses to this camera. This is actually crucial because now this opens up a whole new world of lens options that I now have. And here's the thing from people that I've actually used that have told me it works exactly as it would with native glass. Like it works flawlessly, perfect. And I think that's very important because now I have other options. I cannot do that with a Sony camera. I cannot do that with a Panasonic camera. I can do that with a Nikon camera. So after using this camera now for several weeks, I can see why there's so much hype around this camera. And honestly, I've tried to find flaws with it and it's nearly damn perfect. I did find one thing that I can see it being a problem to some people, and that's the fact that it doesn't have a flip out display. So if you're trying to use this camera to vlog or film yourself, this might not be the best option out there. However, if you are looking for an incredible photo camera that does incredible video, the Z8 is a solid contender. And honestly, having so many Sony lenses and knowing that I can adapt it to this camera, this might be one that I may actually buy and add to my arsenal. Anyway guys, I hope you guys like this little mini review on the Z8. And if you guys have any questions, leave a comment down below. My name is Armando. Thanks again for watching and you will catch me in the next one. Adios.